adding landscape lighting to the pathways or garden areas of your yard can really enhance the landscape. Whenever I'm getting ready to install landscape lighting, there are a few things we have to look at. The first and probably most important is, where is our nearest power source? So in this case, we already have a receptacle located nearby where we can mount the transformer. This is going to become our starting point. The next step is to decide where we want to install light fixtures and what type of fixtures we want to put there. So the first thing I want to work on are some of the path lights, and you want to take into account where you want to light this up. Uh, one of these areas, especially a step, we want to make sure we accent this. So I'm thinking one on each side, maybe right here. That way we can see the drop off of the step and not be too far in the way of the other side. While we're in this section, we're going to work on a couple of up lights. Uh, and I'd like to put them over here, and I really want to accent this brick archway. So this way we can wash up with this, and it'll have a really look, nice look at night. And we can adjust these later on as well. And now we'll put the other one on the other side. Again, trying to stay back roughly a foot or so. For over here, we have a nice shrub that I really want to highlight. And the best way to do that is with an up light. Landscape lighting is usually connected using a low voltage wiring system. While there are line voltage systems available, most commonly you'll see a low voltage system in a residential application. So in this case, we'll be using a low voltage cable like this. And what will happen is we have two conductors where one will be the 12 volt positive, the second one will connect to the common terminal on the transformer. The advantage to this is it's only 12 volts. It's much safer than line voltage, so if you were to cut the wire accidentally in your garden, nobody's going to get hurt. We're going to try to follow the path up against the edge as best we can. That way the wire has less of a chance of getting damaged if we do any plantings. Now that we have everything laid out the way we want it, we can go ahead and start making our connections. And in order to do that, we're going to use this guy. We're going to use a little brass barrel connector. And what happens with this is we'll stick the wires in each side of this connector. We'll be able to tighten down with the Allen screw. Then we're going to use this heat shrink that comes with it to slide over. Once we do that and heat it up, it has an adhesive inside that seals it up and makes it waterproof, and it's never going to be a point of failure. So at the existing receptacle, I'm going to install the transformer. This unit plugs directly into our 120 volt receptacle that's already there, and then it converts that to roughly 12 volts AC. We take our two wire that we just ran all the lights, come up inside, put one to the common terminal, one to the 12 volt terminal, and that gives us our low voltage. This system is designed to have a photocell plugged directly into it. That way this comes on at dusk automatically and turns off at dawn. Now, you may not want it staying on all night, and that's okay. If you don't, you can use the photocell in conjunction with the timer. With that, this system will still come on at dusk, but then you can set the time that it goes off. Let's say you want it to go off at 10 o'clock every evening. It'll go off at 10, come on at dusk, you don't have to worry about it. All right, now that all the connections have been made and the system has been tested, it's time to bury the wires. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use a flat shovel like this, and I'm going to dig a little channel. And we want to get down about four to six inches. Six is a little better if we can. And we're just going to open this up. So we're going to start at our furthest point, start tucking the wire in. 
what I'm going to do is I want to leave a little coil right here at each fixture. This is for anything that's growing, changing, whatever happens down the road. You want to have the ability to move the fixture if a plant gets bigger, if you change the garden bed, if you change anything, you want to have some flexibility. This will allow you to do that. The next thing is we're going to stuff the wire into the trench we dug and start backfilling as we go. And if you don't feel that you can get down there hard enough with your hands, feel free to grab a tool that's got a blunt end on it, something that's not sharp that won't puncture the jacket and give you a little bit of a hand of pushing that down all the way to the six inch mark. While the work for installing outside landscape lighting is fairly straightforward, it can get a little expensive at times. Fixtures can cost you anywhere from $5 a piece to up to a couple of hundred dollars a piece. And if you have to call an electrician to help with the power, it can even get a little more expensive than that. That being said, I still think it's a worthwhile investment for your yard. It adds safety, functionality, and it really extends your outdoor living space. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.